Hello and welcome to another episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev and I'm a Psycore Technology MVP. In this episode I'd like to talk to you about Psycore workflows, what they are and why it is important to use them. Recently I ran into a few Psycore implementations that were very well done, however they turned into kind of a mess and, and the clients uh, were having a lot of issues just because they didn't use Psycro workflows. So what are workflows? So Psycro workflows are gener gen generally used for content approvals. Psycro workflows are configured in the system section right here. If we go to workflows, Psycro does come with now uh, a list of default workflows. The one that we'll take a look at for this video is just the default sample workflow that's applied to sample content in Psycro clean installation. So it's like I said, content uh, workflows are usually used for content approval uh, steps. However, they could really be used for um, any type of actions. If you have any, um, any series of steps that need to happen that uh, require actions from certain people, whether it's content approval, whether it's uh, application uh, approval in your system, whether um, any type of a, um, kind of a um, situation where you need to pass the ball around the company internally or even externally for instance like a clay tablet for translation purposes workflows come in very very handy so they provide a controlled environment for content approval or through moving certain content item, items through um, uh, business steps so let's take a look at the sample workflow and, and see how workflows are set up so under each workflow item we have what's called states. So these are, for instance, here we have draft, awaiting approval, and approved states. Now each state can have actions which will show up as buttons in the review tab up in your content editor or in the experience editor up in the top ribbon. So here under the draft we have the submit and we have the uh, uh, save, auto save action that auto submits it. What that does is it submits our draft for approval. Now once it's in the awaiting approval stage, a few options here. So we have approve and we have reject. So these options have been there for a while. Approve with test. Now that's one of the newer options which I will touch here in just a minute. And finally approved. And once we get to the stage, Sitecore does auto publish our content. Now this is a sample workflow and auto publishing is actually not recommended. Um, in one of the previous videos I uh, touched on uh, the importance of scheduled publishing. Uh, as we um, uh, all should probably know, the publishing clears all Sitecore caches. So every time we publish, the subsequent hits to the website will result in a slower performance. So to avoid affecting website performance for our visitors during peak times, it is recommended to do a scheduled Sitecore publish, uh, preferably during the downtime, perhaps sometime at night. So. I would recommend to not follow this pattern. However, these states represent the basic cycle workflow. So we have a draft, we submit it for approval, another business unit comes in, reviews it, they can either reject it or they can approve it, which moves it to the approved state and then our content change gets published, assuming there are no other publishing restrictions set up. So why do we want to uh, use workflows? Oh. One more thing, um, the workbox. So we saw how to create workflows. Uh, now once the workflow is applied to the content item and the content starts going through workflow steps, workbox is used to view uh, the content items that were assigned uh, to you as a content author, as a Sitecore user, whether, whether you're an author or an approver or uh, you have some other type of role in a more complex content approval workflow, you want to go to the workbox to see what was assigned to you for, um, uh, for an action, uh, for review. So here in the top left corner you have a list of workflows. Uh, once security is properly configured you should only see workflows that you participate in. And once you check those, you will see all the items that have been assigned to you as a member of a certain role uh, in a um, uh, particular workflow. So here you can uh, choose to see the difference between the, the new and the old version of the item. You can preview uh, if it's a page, for instance. You can open the item uh, in the content editor, or you can submit it, and that moves it 
uh, you know that takes the next action whatever that submit button buttons action is right so in our sample workflow remember the submit action moves it to uh, the awaiting approval step let's actually take a look here so I hit submit I can enter a comment I'll just do ASD for the purpose of the demo now and here we go so this item that we click submit for move to the awaiting approval workflow now since I'm an admin I'm logged in as an admin user I see all the workflow in all the states um, what should happen uh, once the workflow has been correctly set up as a content author I would make an edit to an item which makes it a draft I would hit submit and that would go away from my screen I shouldn't have access to the awaiting approval uh, step I may have read access to it some clients do choose to have that um, uh, depending on the business rules however I won't be able to take any action on it so none of these buttons will be available for me so this is the work box and of course just to do a full circle the way we want to apply our workflows is through the item data definition template standard values mouthful standard values and what we want to do is first make sure that we have the standard fields enabled and we do we will use our sh uh, bookmark shortcut jump to the workflow section uh, which is at the very end and what we'll do here is we'll configure the default workflow we'll set it to the sample workflow and that's it that's all we have to do hit save and that's that item has been saved standard items now you can also apply workflows directly to the item but again just like with presentation layer changes that is not a recommended approach however it is possible to do and in some cases it is a preferred way it really depends on the use case uh, but in most cases uh, the workflows should be um, applied through the data definition template standard values so now if we were to let's say create a new item let's see let's do an insert from template let's let's find the template that we just assigned the workflow to user defined this is our new template insert here we go now notice the section the pane on the right has updated and it now shows the workflow state of this item so it is now in draft it is the first version of the item so it is in draft it is in the workflow that we've configured the sample workflow All right and as you can see now we also are getting a message if you publish now uh, the item this selected version version one will not be visible on the website essentially the item has not fully gone through the workflow therefore this, this version and this item being new so this item itself will not show up on the website once we do a publish so once the item goes through the workflow this message would go away and this version given there are no other publishing restrictions will be published to the website with the next publish so this is how workflows work this is how they're set up in a nutshell there are many other intricacies and uh, details once you start diving into custom development for workflows but at a high level this is how you would uh, define and configure the workflows there are plenty of blog posts and uh, psycho documentation on this so I'm not going to go any deeper so why do we want to use workflows number one workflows allow us to cure our content right so as content moves through uh, different publishing approval steps there are certain gates that it has to um, go through and certain checks that have to be performed so it enforces uh, those checks to happen on content so we avoid issues like uh, uh, or mitigate issues such as uh, human errors misspells um, and other things that were a mistake on the content author part ex an accidental mistake so that's one number two it helps us automate the approval workflow uh, some of the workflows are very simple just like our sample workflow that we saw here but some workflows are much more complex for instance let's take a look at the um, clay tablet uh, workflow so that workflow allows you to translate your content into a different language so that workflow has custom actions that grab the content that you enter in Sitecore and send it off to a third party and then receive that uh, um, 
a translated version of that. So that's a bit more of a complex workflow. However, it provides a controlled environment, a controlled and automated environment for content um, approval, for content curation, and any other business logic that you'd like to perform on the content before publishing it. Or even simply moving content through, uh, it doesn't even have to be related to publishing, just moving content through a defined series of steps uh, with actions assigned to them. So number three, which is a very interesting one, Cycro comes with uh, a few actions, the default actions that you can take on an item, like submit it, move it to the next step, uh, notify um, certain roles um, uh, with an email, um, with a, I believe an SMS text message is in there, um, I'm not certain, but however you can create multiple very interesting notification rules. So you, um, you can make the workflows as flexible as you would only notify uh, users that, that are involved uh, in a certain areas of the website, uh, only notify users that made a change uh, to certain pages of the website, notify users at a certain time, a certain way, send a text message, send an email, trigger certain actions, call an external database, submit an action to um, an external CRM, uh, exact target, email um, uh, manager. Uh, you can get really creative with site for actions. Now finally, the last um, reason on my list of top reasons for using workflows, there are um, uh, several more, however, I just want to focus on these, is testing. So let's get back to this approve with test item that I mentioned earlier. So SiteCore with the addition of XDB started focusing a lot on content testing. Before um, the XDB, we could only do tests on presentation layer. Now we can also start testing our content. That means every single change that we make in our content, given we have our XDB properly set up, and marketing goals and events and engagement values configured, uh, outcomes and so forth, every change will be tracked if we choose to approve with the test against our um, goals. So we'll be able to see if we're actually improving our conversion rates or we're hurting our conversion rates with our edits. In fact, we can have some fun because Sitecore tracks uh, at that at the uh, uh, at the user level, so we can actually tell which user, um, which users, um, whose user edits uh, provide um, the most um, uh, the most value uh, or provide the highest uh, improvement in the conversion rate on the website. So this is a very important um, thing to keep in mind. Um, there are some ways, there are a few different ways you can start a test. However, for content authors, this is the only way to start the test is through the workflow. So if you don't have workflows configured, you're missing out on a lot of analytics, a lot of, a lot of value. So one, you're not curating your content, you're not enforcing what goes out to uh, production, you're not enforcing business rules, uh, you're allowing unchecked content to get through the gates, you're potentially publishing manually because you don't have workflows enabled, um, which hurts your website performance, and you're also missing out on the uh, uh, content testing feature. So there you go, there's a, a list for you. So I think that's more than enough reason to start using workflows. So if you have a Cycro solution that doesn't have uh, a workflow configured, um, or it does, but you're still struggling uh, with some of these things, go back, take a look at the workflow, maybe rework it a little bit. If you don't have it enabled, please go back and start working on it and start taking advantage of all the cool things you can do with workflows. And they, workflows can save a lot of time uh, when they're set up properly. Uh, through their automation and bring a lot of value through controlling the content and through testing. So hopefully you see the value of workflows. Uh, if you haven't been using them, this is, uh, this is definitely a time to start. So if you like this uh, video, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Over and out.